Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Substitute driver's license not being approved for persons with outstanding traffic tickets. The Island Traffic Authority, ITE, is reporting that since the start of the year, thousands of motorists have not had their applications for substitute driver's licenses approved because of outstanding traffic tickets. Data from the ITE reveal that up to July 18, some 8,658 people applied for substitute driver's license. 37% of 3,182 of the applicants had a combined total of 59,218 outstanding traffic tickets. The ITA says applications for substitute driver's license will not be approved if applicants record are found to be having outstanding tickets, suspensions, or warrants. Police intercept two vehicles carrying gunmen in St. Elizabeth. The St. Elizabeth Police, since the start of the week, have intercepted two vehicles transporting gunmen who have been arrested or fatally shot. The latest arrest occurred last night. Head of the St. Elizabeth Police Superintendent Dwight Daly says the men had robbed patrons at a bar. About 10 p.m. last night, gunmen held up and robbed the patrons at a bar at Mountainside District in the parish of St. Elizabeth. They then made good their escape in a white Axio motor car. The police were alerted and they quickly responded. They spotted the car and intercepted it. In the car, they found three men, all of Clarendon addresses. The car was searched and a 9mm Taurus pistol loaded with 15 9mm cartridges were found. The men were arrested and the firearms seized. The items that were stolen were recovered. It is to be noted that this is the second car to have been intercepted by the St. Elizabeth Police wherein firearms were found. I want to use this opportunity to commend the St. Elizabeth Police for their resolve, their commitment and dedication. They have pledged to push hard against criminal activities in this division. Justice Minister says human rights lobbying encourages illegal activity. We have to be very careful. That's the words from Justice Minister Delroy Chalk to human rights organizations across the country. He says criminals are encouraged to commit illegal activities due to a perceived mindset that they will be defended by these organizations. The state, with all its resources, if it abuses the powers that it has, can in fact create a great deal of injustice. So yes, human rights organizations tend to focus primarily on the injustices caused by the state. But I dare say, over the years or the decades in Jamaica, we have far too many wrongdoers, criminals, the corrupt, the indisciplined, the lawless, who regrettably have been emboldened to feel that they are above the law. And if they breach the law, they can always get various organizations to speak for them. We have to be very careful. The very pinnacle that must be respected is the rule of law. And where people breach the law, and there's good evidence that they've breached the law, then wrongdoers must be brought to justice. Sure, they must get all the advice, all the representation that is needed so that they can have fair play, that they can have their day in court. But what has happened now is that the courts are so overwhelmed, so overburdened, that when people try to go to court to get justice now, it's almost an impossible task. The challenge is to get a justice system, court system, where when people have conflicts or need to get justice, they can get it within a reasonable time. And I've said to the Chief Justice and to the judiciary and to the courts that any case in the Supreme Court that goes beyond three years, there's not going to be justice, a proper, appropriate justice. Indeed, once the case go beyond three years, you wonder whether the witnesses and what they recall is really accurate. Wandon Gang defendant pleads guilty to assaulting policemen. One of the defendants in the Wandon Gang trial, Tariq James on Wednesday, pleaded guilty to assaulting a policeman during a brawl in February and is to be sentenced on December 14. James and his co-accused Fabian Johnson were each charged with two counts of assault occasioning bodily harm, unlawful wounding, and malicious destruction of property. 
When the matter was called up in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, Mr. James pleaded guilty to hitting the male cop and not guilty to assaulting a female officer. James told the court that his co-accused Fabian Johnson did not assault the officers, but was indicated because he was handcuffed to him. He said the brawl started when he refused to enter the prison truck outside the home circuit court on February 7 after his request to sit close to the back was denied. James disclosed that he suffered an ear injury while in custody at the Horizon Adult Remand Center and wanted to sit away from the truck's horn. He told the court that he reiterated when the policeman snapped his head in the grill. His co-accused is to return to court on September 27. NWC sees big revenue loss due to water theft in St. Elizabeth. The National Water Commission continues to lose millions of dollars due to unscrupulous persons stealing water from the cross-country transmission main in St. Elizabeth to, among other things, cultivate ganja. According to data from the NWC's receivables department, the utility company is losing up to $5 million monthly because of illegal connections to the pipeline which serves several communities including Malvern, Southfield, Top Hill and the Bellevue housing schemes. The losses include the cost of trucking water to affected customers and contractors to remove illegal connections and providing security. Investigations carried out by the NWC reveal that pipes are regularly connected to the transmission main illegally for various purposes including channeling water to ganja farms. The NWC says water has been running to waste on the farm as there is no lock-off system. The farms have no storage system and are therefore dependent on continuous illegal supply. The NWC is reporting that in recent operations, PVC pipes totaling more than 2,000 feet have been seized in excess of 600 feet of illegal drip hose removed from farms and eight ganja farms destroyed in a joint effort with the police. The operations are carried out monthly. The NWC says because of the illegal connections, Significant damage has been done to the cross-country pipeline. Supply of water to several institutions including Hampton High School, Monroe College and Bethlehem Moravian College has either been interrupted. The illegal connections also result in more than 50% reduction in supply to paying customers the NWC reported. Ministry tightens transfer of PEP students. The Ministry of Education and Youth has advised stakeholders that it does not facilitate the general transfer of students from one school to another, except in cases of proximity, where a student may have been placed at a school in which he or she would need to travel long distances from home. Where parents are seeking transfer for children already placed in schools to the primary exit program pep placement process, these parents slash guardians are being reminded that it is in their responsibility to contact a school that is willing to accept their child or children, the ministry said in a release. The procedure for transfer is for parent or guardian to submit a letter of request for transfer to the school. The accepting school should provide the parent or guardian with an acceptance letter. The acceptance letter should be taken to the school where the child was originally placed. The school administrator must provide the parent with a release letter. In addition, the parent guardian is then required to write a letter addressed to the permanent secretary, Ministry of Education and Youth, requesting approval for the transfer. This letter must be accompanied by the acceptance and release letters and should be taken to the respective regional office, said the release. The ministry said that it will, through regional offices, send approval letters to the accepting and releasing schools within one week from the date received. Former opposition leader supports government's position on debt reduction. The biggest legacy that we can find in the future generations of Jamaicans is low debt. That's the advice from former finance minister and PNP president Dr. Peter Phillips. We need a similar prohibition and, and debt build-up mm, and on high inflation, which, which ravages the poorest. Eh? And I think it is very important that we continue to manage our debt downwards and that our biggest bequest that we could give to future generations is low debt as a country that would enable the march of social transformation. Many people tend to see their choices as just the immediate choice, you know, where is my food today? And those are very understandable 
choices, what the country has to do, and what I dare say needs to be part of a consensual decision-making process, is how we trade off those very difficult and agonizing considerations against the long-term need for social transformation and for coming out of the grip of poverty and backwardness. One thing is certain is that there is a crisis coming down the road and that that crisis is going to impair your fiscal situation. Whether that crisis is a hurricane, an earthquake, a flood, or, so, or, a, or a pandemic, for years and years and years, we have been saying, boy, we're not give, delivering a good educational system. All right, there is a report. It's obviously going to cost billions of dollars of investment on the capital side. We won't be able to make these investments unless we are able to spend less on debt service. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.